Hi, welcome to a special Week 10 edition of the Daily Record High School Football Insider. I'm sports editor Aaron Dorkson along with Mike Plant. We're coming to you from the Pines Golf Club. We're going to be previewing the 103rd meeting of the Orville Worcester game, talking to the coaches and meeting the captains here today. Yeah, I laugh because we're like a short duck hook off the 10th tee as we film this. On a beautiful day here at the Pines, we'll be back to talk to the coaches from both teams, Worcester's Doug Haas and Orville's Doug DeVault, right after this break. I'm Andrew Vogel with the Daily Record here with Worcester coach Doug Haas. And Doug, the running game really keyed your victory over West Holmes last week. How much of a factor is the run game going to be on Saturday? Well, it's certainly something that we need to work at, but uh, you know, Orville's going to certainly have something to say about mm -hmm. that. They play tremendous run defense, and so uh, it's going to be a tremendous challenge, uh, but it's certainly something that we need to emphasize, and uh, you know, from a line of scrimmage standpoint, we need to be able to try and control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, big win over West Holmes last week. From a momentum standpoint, going into the offseason, how big would it be to get your second straight win over Orville? Well, number one, it hasn't been done, you know, since I've been the coach here at Worcester. Uh, so number two, you know, to get it over your arch rival Worc uh, Orville would be, you know, huge. And, and then certainly from an offseason standpoint, you know, uh, you're going to remember your last game. And so guys are going to be excited about getting into the weight room and getting back and developing themselves for the following year. So, uh, you know, we're excited about it. Uh, we're more excited about it to send our seniors out with a, with a quality win over a quality opponent and their arch rival. All right. Thanks, Doug. We'll be right back with Orville coach Doug DeVault. I'm Andrew Vogel with the Daily Record with Orville coach Doug DeVault. And Doug, looking ahead to Saturday, Worcester's running game really kind of keep their win over West Holmes. How do you kind of stop them from just kind of running all over on the ground? Yeah, great question. Uh, uh, we're going to try to do what we've been doing. We've been playing pretty good defense throughout these last five games that we haven't been winning, but our, it hasn't been because of defense. We just haven't been able to generate any offense. And I'm hoping we can still step up. I mean, we're going to put as many people in the box as it takes in order to, to try to negate the run. Tavia has been dynamite. You watch him and get better and better, better each week. Uh, and they're, they're good up front. Uh, and then you top that off with their 6'5 quarterback running power. So uh, we got our hands full. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to do what we can. And like I said, we're, we'll do what it takes in order to, to get that negated and see if we can make them do some things they don't want to. And obviously you had a great start. You've, you've hit the rough part of your schedule. How much of a confidence booster would it be um, to right the ship on the last week of the season uh, against Worcester? I, that, that goes without saying. I mean, we, uh, we started better than I think anybody anticipated, and then we hit the meat grinder, and, and those, those games in the middle of our schedule were ones that we knew were going to be very, very difficult. Uh, and then, you're right, we lost some confidence, and, and we haven't been able to find a rhythm offensively. So. Uh, I want these group of seniors to be able to go out with something positive with a good taste in their mouth. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're working real hard trying to get the ship righted offensively. And if we, if we can find a way to generate some offense, we're going to be okay. We'll be right there. Uh, but that, that's something we've been working on, we've been searching for. Thanks, Doug. We'll be right back. Mike and Aaron will be right back with the slate of games for Friday and Saturday. Javante Lidge, I play wide receiver. My favorite football memory was stopping West Holmes from going into the playoffs. I'm Chandler Dawson. I play tight end and um, safety. My favorite football memory was beating Clear Fork freshman year in triple overtime. My name is James Thomas. I play right tackle and rush end, and my best favorite memory is beating Orville. My name is Adam Katulak. I play receiver and linebacker. And my favorite memory is being clear for freshman I'm Michael Patrick. I play corner. My favorite memory is beating Orko. I'm Joel Zook, a wide receiver and strong safety. Uh, my favorite football memory is getting the game winning sack in my first varsity game as a freshman. I'm Kyle Ritchie. I'm a free safety and wide receiver. And my favorite football memory is uh, intercepting the game to beat Northwest. Yeah. I'm Cy Morgan. I play guard and defensive end, and my favorite football memory is my first varsity start. Oh, yeah. 
I'm Ben Nolt. Uh, I play guard and linebacker. My favorite memory is beating clear fourth freshman year in overtime. I'm Cam Dockery. I play quarterback. My favorite football memory is getting in orange on my freshman year. I'm Harrison Brown. I play left guard and defensive tackle. My favorite football memory is beating Worcester my sophomore year. Trevor Summers, uh, middle linebacker and tight end. My favorite memory is uh, playing with the guys that I grew up with. Hey, it's always good to hear from the captains and the coaches for both teams in this historic rivalry. Uh, and other games in week 10, uh, all Friday night games in the Wayne County Athletic League, Chippewas at Hillsdale, Dalton will go to Smithville, and Waynedale's at Ripman, and the big game, uh, Norwayne at Northwestern. We've also got uh, Triway at Timken, Tusla at Fairless, and West Holmes makes a short little journey through the Mohican Forest to Clear Fork, and what should be a pretty good ball game. And finally, Shelby at Loudonville and Cloverleaf at Highland. Yeah, and of course, Saturday night, the Worcester at Orville game, uh, both these teams come into the game under 500, but it can still make their season, Mike, if they can get the win in this and go into the off season. The underclass will have a lot of momentum. The seniors will have a great memory. No doubt about it, which team comes in with more momentum? It's uh, Worcester after upsetting West Holmes as Martavius Dyson went over 240 yards rushing and scored five touchdowns. So he's going to be a big key stopping him. And as Coach Duvall said earlier, they're going to have to get some offense. The game of the week, on Friday night is definitely uh, Norway going to Northwestern. We said since the preseason that everything could be on the line in this, and it is, Mike. Right, uh, Northwestern can sew up the outright Wayne County Athletic League title with a win Friday night when Norway comes to town, and also a home playoff berth. So the Huskies have a lot to play for. Talking to Joe Harbor from Norway, Aaron, he thinks with the victory Friday night that Norway could grab that eighth and final spot uh, in Division Five, Region 16, which would be big. Uh, Northwestern, of course, all year has been led by running back Tyler Smith, who is going to graduate as one of Wayne County's all-time best backs, Aaron, when you add up his numbers. This year, over 1,400 yards of rushing, 27 touchdowns on the ground. He's now Wayne County's all-time scoring leader. And, uh, of course, with him, you've got Malachi Noletti, the quarterback, who's a double threat. Um, their passing attack isn't quite what they want it to be, but they haven't had to throw the ball much. Add in Matt Kohler and Chad Swisgood, running behind a really efficient offensive line, including Mammoth uh, guards Joey Workman and uh, Matt Hunter. Matt Hunter's 290, Aaron. Joey Workman's 330. Now, these two kids will also be on the defensive line. Uh, Northwestern's defense features a group of fast, they're not very big, but fast, hard-hitting linebackers, Bo <coughs> Fortune, Tanner Top, uh, among them. Smith and Kohler also play defense, and of course, Malachi's a safety. So, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna need a lot of defense, I think, Aaron, Friday night to stop the high-powered Norway attack. Yeah, I mean, Joe Dreyer for Norway just continues to put up unbelievable numbers. And when they added Caleb Harris back from a dislocated shoulder, <clears throat> they badly missed Caleb when they lost to Chippewa. <clears throat> That's made Norway that much tougher. Brock Maxwell's also back from an injury. Uh, two guys that transferred from Rittman, Jones and Underation are now on the defense. So Norway, all of a sudden, as down as they were feeling after that Chippewa loss, they're feeling like they can come in and, hey, you have to stop us, and we're still the defending champ. So it really sets up an intriguing, great matchup to end the WCL season. And don't forget Caleb Harris. I just looked at our stats uh, last night. He has 23 catches on the season, 13 of them for <laughs> touchdowns. So that big play ability uh, will certainly be in play Friday night. That'll do it uh, for the Daily Record High School Sports Football Insider here at the Pines. Uh, alongside Sports Editor Aaron Dorkson, this is Mike Plant saying enjoy the games and thanks for watching.